At Armbre, the annual fund campaign is really the backbone of our fundraising efforts. That's because the projects are designed to enhance the learning of current students. So we conceive of and raise funds for the project this year, for example, and then we launch it next year. In the past, you've supported projects like smart board upgrades in classrooms, classroom furniture upgrades, playground equipment, uh, the new class set of microscopes in the science lab, and of course the new bike shelter that's being built this week. So thank you for your support of those projects. Like all independent schools, tuition fees only cover about 85% of our operating costs. So it's through the generosity of donors like yourselves that we're able to bridge that gap. This year's projects include um, musical instruments, visual art equipment, and smart board upgrades across all divisions, and of course our scholarship and bursary fund as well. In the coming weeks and months, you'll be given opportunities to support the project or projects of your choice, and I just wanted to take a moment here to thank you in advance for doing so. Thank you for your support. 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 Thank you for your support.
are just two minutes until the Ombre Ospreys take flight in their home opener against the Bayview Sharks. Take your seats and get ready for an electrifying matchup. Two minutes remaining. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the home opener of the Senior Boys Ombre Ospreys, where they will entertain tonight Bayview Sharks. My name is Leslie States, and I'll be on the mic tonight, shared with Coach Bev Greenlaw and we will be giving you the call for the game tonight. We have starting lineups for Bayview. Number 12, Aiden Taylor. Number five, Cole Johnson. Number 11, Isaiah Parsons. Number seven, Kyle McDonald. And number 23, Aiden Rondeau. Bayview High Shark. There we go. Some penetration. That was a pretty good look. Nadeau can good, really good shoot it, as you know. Yeah, it was a really good look. Yeah, they're going to push it. I think Armbury's going to try and push it as much as possible, that's for sure. Good second pass. Nice Kick out, yeah, pass, nice pass. Open look. Nice open look. Jalen, Jalen tried to go off the glass with a three. I'm not sure that was attempted off the glass. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think he just rushed the shot. There's a travel call there. <laughs> Referee in your game tonight, you'll see Neither team's really settled in to any sort of s signature style yet. Kind of warming up, getting used to one another, I think. I think they're still trying to feel themselves out yep. as teams. This is only the second game of the season, or third game of the season for Armbre, the second league game. Um, they lost last week to uh, CPL in 91-63, and then rebounded yesterday and had a good win against Rossi High, 93-85. So they're just trying to get, get their feet under them. Bayview hosted their own tournament over the weekend and won their tournament um, quite handily over most of the teams that they played in their tournament. So I guess it was uh, Rossi, Sydney Academy, and Lockview were the two teams. Uh, nice basket there. Nice put that basket there by Samuel Peretti. So far, both teams are going to the offensive boards pretty effectively, which will be a factor in who ends up winning this thing. Most definitely. You see Armbre starting yep. up. Armbre is starting out in a 2-3 zone. That's a charge call on Madden Ross. I was going to comment, by the way, pretty high-powered refereeing crew here, Les. <laughs> well, you know, we have uh, Dawson Bungay and Brian States and Paul DeBailey, so uh, they, went, they went to the well to bring them out today. Well, all he tried had to the, take that had to the, the dish. Had, he had the dish there to try uh, to vey. Yeah. Well, that's a clear, clear take right to the hoop. There was no help off, help defense yeah. on that play for Strong sure. Strong take, and there was not rotation to. Pretty 
pretty strong. And that's yeah. what Ron I tough, does. Tough, tough that's take. what Ron I does. He gets to the hoop, he can take him off the bounce, and he's he's really strong. You know, may not look that, that strong, but uh, he's strong when he gets into the hoop. I think he's, he's kind of wiry strong. He's plus, very plus, he's wiry. lengthened quite a bit since last season. He, he has. looks like he's added a, you know, quite a bit of overall length. Yeah, he has definitely uh, had a growth spurt over, over the summer. But that was a nice take. He stayed down strong, took it through, you know, really some contact. Very and, nice. Uh, so into the game for Armbury right now is Dion Coward and Nye Simmons. Nye Johnson, Nye Johnson. sorry. Now both Dion and, and Nye have been, this is, I'm ha almost a little bit surprised to see them in uniform because they've both been injured. And... Uh, it's so far, they're looking like they're moving okay. I think I think they might be on limited minutes tonight after talking to uh, Coach Tramble, but uh, they did play yesterday against Rossi, so I guess we'll see we'll see how that goes. But well, that's so that fouls on Nye that's Johnson. No, I don't. Is it? Yeah. It looked like the other kid fouled him in retaliation. Okay, yeah, so I guess no, the fouls, yeah, fouls they're both nine. five, so yeah. I was waiting to see which five we were going to get called. But he, his first thing, he had a nearly clean steal. Then the, in the struggle for the thing, he, Nye was called for pushing off, I think. Also into the game right now for Armbre is number three, Peyton Flint. That last basket by Bayview. Good by look. Rock, Rock that's, that's what Ollie can do really consistently. Very consistent from three. When he's in balance, he is uh, very smooth. That first foul is on Ollie Nadeau. The referees are going to be um, watching the hand checks, especially on the ball handler. That's it would a new appear. Rule this year. That's yeah. a new rule this is year. It? Okay. Yeah, they're, Point of they're, they're okay. really, really emphasizing any hands on the. On the on the ball handler and they're, and they're, so they're calling it so it's something everybody should be aware. That's a nice block by uh, Dion Coward. Pretty good transition. You can tell that Nye is rusty. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's got to settle down and yeah. just let the and game come. Possibly to him. trying a little too hard, but you know when you've been out for several weeks, which he has, um, your timing. You know, just the feel for it isn't there yet. Nice penetration and kick. Nice kick there. Offline. There just happened to be a mis mishap there. Ran into his own team player, Dion did. But he got the ball back, right? He didn't give up. They're going to try and push it and find the open man. Wow. Wow. Like... That 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 there right there is uh, the home court home basket for you. <laughs> There's another steal by Dion Coward, trying to find there a play one more good pass. Look. That was good there. ball movement. Yeah, nice pass, that extra pass. Nye Johnson nails it at three. But that. Bayview takes advantage of poor transition. So yeah, got to get back. That basket's good by um, Madden Ross. He leaked out and he was there. Not a bad look. Ball could also have been reversed, which could have been interesting to see what might develop. But it wasn't a bad look. There's a call on the floor, so no, no shots on that. That is on Peyton Flint. Isaiah Parsons is back in for Bayview. And uh, Armbre is rolling their players through Jalen. Simmons is back in, and so is uh, Sam number 12, Proetti. Sam. Yeah. Sam Proetti is back in. Got to defend that little high back screen a little more physically than that one was defended. That's a tough basket there. That's a top basket there by Jalen Rugen Simmons. Yeah. 
Much more in balance on that one, although, again, you'd That's like nice to see steal. the ball there. Nice steal. Late Mark guys Hayton. coming, nothing there. The impatient, trying to find the open player. That was missed all the way. And now Nye Johnson's fighting for the rebound, and they get a jump ball called. I think this is Peyton Flynn's first game is, and first action, really, uh, as well as the yeah. number, number of the arm break kids are... are you know, getting their first game action, but almost their first basketball action. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Renai Beals is back in, um, taking out uh, Nye Johnson. This is Johnson, who's done quite a quite a nice job running the point for Bayview thus far. Gotten good penetration, finding teammates. That basket there by number 12, Aiden Taylor. Scores 15-12 right now for Ambre. Time to move the ball. Yeah, well, okay. He, he fought his way in there. He was going. The D and kind of uh, he, he relaxed. The layup. <laughs> nice steal by Ron I. Bills. And that's a travel call there. So the ball goes I back to uh, I think it looked like he lifted the pivot foot on the take. A lot of uh, early season over eagerness. Probably both Bayview maybe have a little advantage. One is that they have more seniors on the floor, but also they, their own tournament gave them some good game experience. So they're uh, going to be a little more settled, I suspect. In the game now for Bayview is Max Fort Knox and also uh, number 24, Sejan Wright. And that basket was just rolled off, ball just rolled off the front of the rim for, for Wright. Good ball movement, lost the ball on the bounce, but the ball movement that set up the penetration was very good. And coming in for the Ospreys, Elijah Matley and, and Treve Jones. And Elijah Matley in as well? Yes. Yeah. And there's Renai Beals going to the hoop. Good just, take, just didn't finish. That one. Two on one. Yeah. That's nice movement. Nice Again, movement without the ball. Again, uh, Cole Johnson for Bayview. Good penetration. Found a teammate for a yeah. very easy open yeah. layup. No, that was good ball movement. Good, good and good movement patience inside by Bayview when they didn't have it in transition. Yeah, Aiden Taylor moved well after he made that pass. He looked for the open space and found Try to it. Try get out of there. Good cornered, quick sort of uh, improved corner double by Bayview. Basketball One of the difficulties Arm Armbray had in their game against C.P. Allen at C.P. Allen last week was that they struggled to finish against the older, stronger kids. So we get five seconds on Hit the, the rope, they've got five. Yeah. Five seconds on the clock uh, to e for the end of the first quarter, so and they just four. I think the clock started a little, a little oh. early. Idea good, delivery off. And that's the end of the first quarter. Aaron Bray is up 1916 over Bayview Sharks. As we saw, there was a lot of up and down, trying to push the ball. Trying to make something happen. Quite a few turnovers on both sides, but uh, I think if they settle down a bit going into the next quarter, they've all gotten the rust off a little bit now, so we'll see what happens moving forward. Fair, I think a fair amount of, uh, with Armbray, one is that uh, Coach Tramble is using, he's going deep in his bench, obviously. He's got a lot of young kids, and I think part, it's always a double, uh, intent in the games because he's trying to get an array of kids on the court to get some playing experience because they're young and also I think probably this early in the season and with so many kids having their first action trying to figure out what his ultimate combinations are going to be as the season goes on with Bayview it looks to be a little more subtle lineup and coach Higgins is uh, he does a very good job and, and uh, develops both players and his teams 
well over the seasons. Um, he's got a more experienced lineup, and so far they're playing much more like a, an experienced lineup. Whereas uh, the Armbray kids are, most of their errors and turnovers so far have not really been forced by the defense. No, they've, no, they've not at the all. They've been a result of maybe trying a little too hard, pushing a little too much, m maybe not quite moving the ball uh, as soon in the possession as they could to see what might happen on the other side. Those kinds of things, which not, are not as settled features of no, use. For sure. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> not as settled. Um, but you're right. Like Coach Tramble is getting a lot of the players in, getting them in early. Um, to see you know what the, what the combinations look like but also because he does have a couple of players that are coming off of injuries um, and just and just new to the you know back to the team so just giving them a little bit of mi limited minutes and seeing how they fit into the whole scheme of things there so is a lot of young talent though there is there <laughs> in is in this lineup that's a pretty good look for Renai which, which is a scary thing yeah it can be a scary thing for sure that was a good look by Renai and, and almost a pick and a put good, back. And a good uh, follow-up by Treve. He didn't get quite regain his balance before he went back up. He's going to get a lot of old boards for them this time. Good, yeah. good take by number, number 12. 12. Aiden. Aiden Taylor. Aiden and Taylor, a, a yeah. A nice strong take. Yeah. He, he, what he's shown so far, he had the sort of step back on the perimeter, which didn't look quite as smooth. But inside, his footwork has been very solid. And yeah. he's, been, he's finished well. Ah! A, uh, uh, almost a turnover there by Bayview, yeah. and I got it back, but he didn't capitalize on it. So a save so by Jalen Berglund Simmons on that, because that was a two-on-one. Yeah, Sage on right thought he had a layup there, but uh, Berglund Simmons was right there to contest that. Johnson clearly is their point guard. I mean, he they're settled much better when he kind of initiates most definitely and, and you can see how he does settle them down Berglund Simmons missed the box out on that one and Fort Knox got those two points there yeah so we have Dion Coward coming up bringing it up the floor now looking to see if they can uh, get a good possession here not sure he called that but uh, I'm not sure he called that off the glass three either, but I'll tell you, that was a nice step back by Renard The step Beals. back was nice, yeah. Nice step back for sure. Again, another O board for Wright for Bayview. O boards are crucial. It's interesting. You and I watched a couple of games together recently, and I, I, I both at the college and the high school level. Team that wins the O boards, if they win the O boards dramatically, they're going to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for sure, for sure. Because you're going to put the other team in foul trouble. You're going to get a lot uh, higher percentage opportunities. Uh, you're going to get more opportunities. You know, the boards are crucial. Well, it also bothers, you know, the, the coach because, I mean, when you start having, letting the smaller the smaller people on the floor actually get the old boards, um, that means you're really not working hard to get yourself in position. Well, so, the, the, the phrase box out, may still be in use <laughs> the practice i, I don't sure see so. very much in use actually in modern basketball so if you are active from the perimeter on the offensive boards you will get a, a chance to get the ball back armbra is working hard there on the double team on the sideline just let him get a little bit of space to get that out so another opportunity um tried for the tip tip is typically a low percentage on putback if you gather and go back up, you, your chances get better. That's a tough pass to try to get that in the middle there. Yep. A lot of passing is about understanding angles and, and who's who and what the situation is. I think that foul was on uh, Jaden Brooklyn Simmons. I think that was the second. And Nye who Johnson's was that coming on, in. Jaden. Jaden, okay. Yeah, good take again by, by Johnson and uh, drew a couple of defenders and got the foul. <laughs> Big rebound there by uh, Peyton Flint. Ah, uh, no, no, no. 
did Turn not need there. that, and it was too risky at that point in the possession. You're just beginning your possession. Take a look, but that There's doesn't mean look doesn't Nye. mean throw. Cross court. Good take. Nice take. Nice take. There. Nice finish. Good transition off the relatively high turnover. High on the court, i.e. Nye's putting a little bit of pressure on Johnson Nye is there. moving pretty well. There's yeah, actually yeah. he is. He doesn't, really, doesn't look like he's had an ankle injury recently. Well, it was also high ankle, which is <laughs> usually pretty slow to heal. That's a nice look, nice open look by... Good board, uh, spread the floor. Right. Good transition defensively by Rebound. Bayview. Oh. Lost it on the dribble. Nice dish. Idea by Fort Knox to get it back to right was a good idea. Delivery wasn't there. Time out for Osprey. Part of the teaching with passing is, is intent, and the intent there was good, and then execution and delivery. That second part is the kind of decision part of things, and that takes more time to figure out. And sometimes the best pass is the one you don't throw. <laughs> yeah, really. Just hold the ball, make a safe release, reverse the court, and see what might happen on the other side. So just a reminder for our fans, to follow Arm Armbre Ospreys on Instagram accounts at Armbre Basketball, at Armbre Ospreys. Hashtag rep the A, hashtag unleash your potential, hashtag win the day at Armbre. Another factor, by the way, I, I sort of joked a little bit about the, the, the quality of the referees, very, very high level of experience. Uh, on the court. Very good for these kids to have this caliber of referee to work, play for, <laughs> under, with, whatever, uh, at this stage of their careers because good referees are a big part of good basketball. Yeah, and they, they know exactly what they'll be able to get away with and what they can't and what's, what's going to be well, called on learn. a regular basis. If, they'll yeah. learn if what's going to they didn't be know coming in, they'll <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're going to gain some uh, education today. And again, you have two senior officials, but the three officials, and along to help Dawson, who is a level one official, um, and so he's been refereeing a few years now, but still. But, but who comes from a referee, a very experienced referee family, and himself was a high caliber player, so understands the game. But still learning the refereeing learning aspect, the referee but aspect learning from it. two very experienced officials here, so. And frankly, two of our best. And it's, you know, th that's how you grow the game of basketball when you have the young um, and experienced that are being uh, fostered and mentored by the seniors. It's always nice to see. And particularly when those young uh, uh, women and men have played the game. The okay. more players we can get into officiating, the better the game will become. That was a great steal by Aaron Bray and, and a handoff to Elijah Matley who finished that. Yeah, it was both a, a nice steal and a good transition. So as I said, Armbray's in a 2-3 oh. zone. Good There's penetration by and Nye. very nice D. Quick hands. That pass has got to be got to be to lead him to Ball the hoop, moved not well. make him face. Ha! Ah, interesting. Ball reversed over. That's a, a that's point. a primarily interior kid, young who uh, was very smooth on that three. Yeah, he stepped out and shot that like he knew what he was doing. Nice shot. A lot of knocking down shots in general, but in threes in particular is when you have time and space, utilize it to have balance and rhythm. If you release with balance and rhythm, chances are pretty good an open three is gonna go in. And some of the future down there in the court now. Oh yeah, there we have it. They're out there. As you'll notice, the Osprey team may look a little different uh, this year compared to last year. They have a couple of their players that have gone on to play, are playing in the OSBA and the Prep League in Ontario with Orangeville Prep. So Amari Upshaw and uh, Abbas are now playing in the Orangeville Prep. Is Abbas at Orangeville, or at I Orangeville. heard he was at Rossett? No, he's at Orangeville Prep. Oh, okay. I checked with the Coach John today, so okay. it's, a, it's always nice to see that uh, you know our Nova Scotian athletes are, 
are looking to um, develop their games and, and get to the next level. Well, Amari, of course, is a, an exceptional young talent and uh, uh, had a great grade nine year for uh, Armbray last season. Um, and that foul call was on um, Aiden Taylor. Again, set up by a turnover. Turnovers are seldom good things, but in where on the court they happen and, and what the numbers are when they happen is also an extremely important factor. High turnovers, i.e. high on the court, closer to your defensive basket, tend to really hurt, hurt you over the flow of 40 minutes. Good take, but good D. Um, good take up until the point where he decided to try the layup. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kick was better. Renai Beals for another nice three off three of that. Nice balance three in transition for Renai. They get the defensive stop at one end and then uh, get the ball to the open man. And Renai just shot that like it was his. Treve is playing a great defense on Aiden. Treve is a force. I mean, he, he's just uh, very, just innately his length but his coordinated length and, his, and the quickness of his, of his ups. Uh, he's a very talented young man. I also find that he plays beyond his age. Like he really is playing um, very smart basketball. Um, he's make, taking good, just making and pretty good decisions. And apparently, I'm told that he, he is so relatively new to the game. Yes. I first saw him playing for Tugi Wright, Terry Wright, uh, with Community Y under 16s last uh, year. And Terry, of course, does a great job developing kids. And uh, you could see the young man was, was new <laughs> to, but had already done a considerable amount of fundamental work on his footwork and timing and so on. But I think, it, it, you know, if he stays injury free and keeps at it and does the work, I think he has a great, great potential. And now I just picked up, I think, his third foul. Um, if not the second, for sure, Nye Johnson. So he's going to take a seat. Jalen Berglund Simmons is back in, as well as. Uh, well run Ollie baseline Nadal. out of bounds play. Use the back screen and, and a little too easy from the arm break point of view, but well executed by Bayview. Four minutes left in the second quarter. Arm is up 34 24. Had a little run there. Now, right idea to seek penetration there because we were getting a little too horizontal with the movement. But when you penetrate in that instance, he did get fouled, but he also had a kick, which could have set up pass pass and, and again, a little better action with wi better drive lanes. I think for Armbre, though, they're pretty happy with the foul call oh, because that's that. number 12, uh, Aiden Taylor. And so he's gonna have to sit um, at least for the rest of this quarter, I would imagine. Yeah. That so was an ill-chosen defensive foul, actually. Yeah. He didn't have to foul. The defense had been achieved. But, uh, again, Armbray will be happy to get the foul. And Treve missed those two um, foul shots. That's one thing, um, you know, teams, as a coach, I'm always upset myself when you have those free those free easy foul shots and you don't make them, they can come back to haunt you later on. Free throws are, uh, I think they're underemphasized in the practice habits of too many modern players because the game hasn't changed that radically. Free throws often will still be the deciding thing most in close definitely, games. Most definitely. Long three. A long Got three. It. Long we noticed pre-game that uh, by number 11. Parsons was, Parsons. was, was kind of in warm-up, was shooting him from out there and did not look like he was straining, so that may simply be his range. And I think he wanted the referee to know he got slapped on the head on that three, too, but he didn't get that call, but he'll take the three. That was a good three by Nadeau. That he, that's definitely his shot. It was in the rhythm of, of the team offense, so didn't go in, but it was a good shot. Peyton Flint's going to take a seat, and Renai Beals is going to come back in. Bayview is kind of creeping back into the, closing the gap here. Let's see what Johnson's gonna do now. That is his, his main entry. 
of uh, Aiden Taylor so, is off the floor. See, as a coach, I, I wouldn't be that happy with that possession. A little too much dribble and didn't really get things. He's played very well, but that particular choice I don't like very much. I'm not sure if Parsons is going to spend the rest of his game standing out there shooting threes. I think, you know. Again, that, that's very much within his repertoire. You know, if you're going to miss a three on one end, you're, you're not want to try to give up one on the other end. And Ali Nadeau, like he is known for that for sure. That's nice, a nice take. take. Johnson in that instance made a nice decision. Little hand dish handoff to Parsons and he finished very strongly in rhythm. Yeah, and Parsons just answered what I just said because he did take the ball right to the hoop on that one and finished. So definitely success on that possession. Nice dish. Oh, look at that. As we were discussing, there's a little bit of potential there. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. Ren Ren that was a quick up. Renai, that was very quick. Renai Beals, uh, that's a beautiful assist, and he'll take that every time. Nice dish in rhythm and a very strong, quick finish. Yeah, he put that exactly where uh, Treve Jones needed it, right in, right in the middle, and uh, he could just go right up with it. That was another foul on uh, Jalen Bergman Simmons. Now, how many fouls did you say Nye has on? Nye on? has at least two. I can't really, f we don't have the stats with us, but uh, One has of the at least problems two. with having quick hands is that your temptation level rises sometimes. Well, in the but discipline level, right? Yes, yeah, but o over the course of a season, you have to get a little better at reading yeah. when it's there, when it's not. That's and, right. And just, you know, the quick hands are an asset. That's a great you, rebound you there. Make great rebound there by Ollie. Nice board and kick back out. That's a tough shot. Jalen likes that step back. He does, he does. And that's a second, uh, oh, it's another foul on Oli. And uh, he'll take a seat and um, Elijah Mantley will come in. Now Elijah is a grade nine kid who, who actually got some playing time uh, in the second part of the season last year as a grade eight mm -hmm, for Arm Break mm -hmm. and actually acquitted himself pretty well. He um, has, has a pretty good basketball brain functioning. Bayview is going to have to uh, capitalize on these free throws. They've just had three possessions on at the foul line. Um, empty possessions. Yeah, empty and possessions. They're only down you know. nine, and that's opportunity to get six free oh, points. Strong take. And then you got quick feet, quick feet Renai there. That's Red Sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I call that one Red Sea. <laughs> the water's parted. As Coach Tremble told me, that's uh, Renai Money Beals, and uh, that layup was Ren definitely money. Renai has been very consistent so far in this game. It, offensively, he's played uh, very much, pretty much under control and made good decisions and reads uh, and has done some nice finishes. Good kick. So Will Stewart is in the game now for Armbre along with Sam Peretti and uh, Peyton Flint is back Time in Time to move two. it and move it again. Yes. Thank you. Oh, well done. And that was a nice good basketball. Layup. And there's a nice layup there to finish with Elijah Matley. A nice pass from Peyton Flint. They got a steal. But notice that what set that up was the ball reversal and the pass pass. Yeah. Then and the cut and cut by Elijah and yeah. a very nice find by Peyton. Patience. Good idea. A little tight quarters. And Stewart's going up. Oh. Yeah. Peyton Flint along with Treve Jones. Both very, very good to the old boards. Mm -hmm. Quick, active, quick up. Yeah. And good hands. Ten seconds left in the in the half, and so Coach John Tramble is going to drop one last play and see if they can go into the free throws are definitely a factor for Bayview in this game. I mean, they they've, are. They've had opportunities, and uh, you know, getting to the free throw line is one of the, your big goals as a team. The more often you get there, the the better your chance to have control of the game. 
you know, gets for a whole bunch of reasons, including tempo control and putting the other team's better players <laughs> out of the game. And but you've got to come away with, with some makes. And also, we already discussed about, you know, the Osprey and their players and the tenacity of their defense. And, you know, they like to, they like to put pressure on and they're kind of handsy. So you play, when you're playing against a team like that, you, you're expecting to get to the hoop, to get to the foul line uh, quite a few times. So you have to be able to take advantage of that. Yep. And, and really, again, with uh, Armbray being a young collection of players, Part of what they have to do is to begin to edit, right? As they get more experience, learn when that quickness can play to their advantage, when it works against them because they, they over, as you say, they get over handsy. And even when you've got quick hands, the feet got to move too. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Angle is everything. 10 seconds. Time to go. Nobody's moving. No penetration. There's no screen. No, you, you, you might, offense is about penetration and open looks in combination. And each of them executed properly will get you the other. Ball reversal tends to get you both. But in that instance, you had none of the desirable qualities happening. And especially late clock, there is a tendency sometimes for players, even at the higher levels, to just perimeterize. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Usually once you get around 10, 9 seconds, you almost always see a post player coming and setting a, a high ball screen, um, whether it's for a screen and roll or whether it's to come off of the screen for a jump shot. But there's absolutely none of that movement in that last possession there. And particularly late game, far too often when a team needs a three, you see them just perimeterize and seek to somehow get threes, but nobody breaks the D down. If you want an open three, you've got to penetrate yep. <laughs> and then kick and, and then ideally kick, kick pass pass and maybe skip, what have you. But the penetration sets up the open perimeter. So we're back at it for what one looks second. like one second. So that's Be a catch and shoot. Be interesting to see what... what uh, what they try, because they're coming from about, yeah, three quarters of the court away. Is the Probably is the some kind of a ba back screen, a long pass over, maybe. No, no, Parsons going to inbound it, so he's not going to get it for the shot. Um, maybe right. He's looking he's back cut, for he's it. Cutting, he's cutting, he's cutting, he's cutting. Nothing, that's not going to get it with one second. Yeah, not bad. Oh, you got it off, though. You got it off. Madden Ross got it off, but it didn't fall. It was a slow one second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a very fulsome one second. So we're going into the half uh, with Armbre leading 43 to 30 over Bayview Sharks. And so interestingly enough, the opening minutes, Bayview, I thought, pretty much controlled play, but then Armbre really started to notch up the defensive intensity and the ball and players began to move much more effectively and when they did that they got both penetration and open looks and kind of outplayed Bayview the the latter part of the the half and i think that that is um Aaron Bray's bread and butter is their defense i think i know that coach tramble and and the coaching staff are really working on that um and because they're so athletic and they are so quick um that is exactly what does happen in games where they'll, when, if they're down at all, that they'll come back with that. So um, we'll look to see if they hone in on that and st stick with that for the second half. R recognizing that they do have a few players that are potentially um, in foul trouble, two fouls, at least three of them going into the second half with three fouls. Yeah, and particularly, again, given the youth factor, as they learn that you're not going to take the ball from the guy you're guarding that often, but if you can create angular situations that force him into doing stuff at bad angles or off balance, your off ball defense comes into play and you've got a lot of quick kids who can shoot gaps. Most so definitely, yeah, most definitely for sure.
Your gifts directly contribute to real, tangible change on our campus and will immediately impact all of our students. With your support, we can expand our programs and fund enhancements to our classrooms and co-curricular learning experiences. Your gift, no matter the size, can make a difference. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Curiosity, we were able to outfit our science lab with state-of-the-art microscopes. When we pool our resources together, we can make a significant impact on the armory experience for our students. All gifts, regardless of size, have the power to inspire. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support.
At Armbre, the annual fund campaign is really the backbone of our fundraising efforts. That's because the projects are designed to enhance the learning of current students. So we conceive of and raise funds for the project this year, for example, and then we launch it next year. In the past, you've supported projects like smart board upgrades in classrooms, classroom furniture upgrades, playground equipment, uh, the new class set of microscopes in the science lab, and of course the new bike shelter that's being built this week. So thank you for your support of those projects. Like all independent Half of uh, the home opener for Ombre Ospreys versus Bayview Sharks and Boys Senior Basketball Division One. Ombre starting off up 43-30. That's a nice take to the hoop by Treve Jones. One of the things Treve does, it's a, he's got, got a good sense of the need to initiate penetration. There's that pressure we were talking about with Ombre yep. right off the back. And again, notice it was on the pass. And Sam was the uh, recipient of that. Good transition there by Bayview. Pass to finish by uh, Aiden Rondo. That's a good look. It's a little off. Rebound by Parsons. Pull up jumper from the Trying foul line. Push that up the floor. Very much open. Parsons gets it back. That's uh, we've seen that range. Yeah, that, yeah. He's got he's got the range for sure. Yeah, he's, he's comfortable. Not afraid to shoot it. That's he's clear. not afraid to shoot yeah. it. Oh, might have got away with a little bit of. <laughs> I thought that might have been a little bit of a shuffle there too. <laughs> yep. Quick feet. Yeah. Nah, he should have shot that. Yeah, he had he had the uh, range and rhythm there on the catch, but he. And that's, and that's his shot. That's usually what yeah. he does. And shoot, what happened right? was he, he moved both feet on the take. Sort of like a split almost. Kick. Good stop and there by Renai. Not a bad Another look. Rebound. And uh, actually Nadeau had shut off the pass-pass opportunity. So not a bad choice. Nice ball, nice ball handling by Renai Beals. I would like to have seen him kick, kick that. Kick it back to, up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because he had everybody drawn at him. He had done him. a great job yeah. uh, of getting penetration and draw, uh, drew three defenders, three. actually, and Nadeau was wide open yeah. at the top. Yeah, no, definitely. With a wide open passing lane to him. But, you know, again, you, you, you figure these things out as you play the game and have more experiences and more opportunities. And he has been finishing extremely well throughout the game, so. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a different looking team from last week when they played C.P. Allen. Now again, a different team that they're playing against in the Sharks, but still, um, Arbre well, does look a little bit more comfortable, um, a little more confident than they did last week. Yeah. And, and the big thing, differentiator there with C.P. Allen was they just uh, killed on the offensive glass. Especially uh, in the second half, like it, there was only yeah. a two-point differential yeah. going into half, and then... Uh, yeah, then the wheels fell off for sure. But it was, uh, I think you'd agree, largely for uh, turnovers and quick transition. That's right. Uh, and offensive boards, offensive boards, offensive boards. Nice. That was a nice move. That's a nice move. Lovely pullback, Hezzy. Nice one, nice one. Renai clearly has worked on his game since last season as yeah. well as growing because his skills are just smoother and just just everything is much more synchronized. Yeah, he's, def he's definitely playing with a whole lot more confidence. That's a good take, um, but the finish wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, well angled. And again, he also had the kick out to Renai as he attacked. Yep. He was on the right angle to see that kick out. Good kick. Wide open look Not there. a bad look. Yep. Armbrey's going to look to push it again. Yeah. Uh, kind of got himself committed a little too high. Yeah. Yeah. He did, didn't really have anything left to do but to keep going through. Yeah. In that one, if he downshifts, get, keep the dribble alive, but downshift at, this, at two steps higher than where he eventually ended up there, he's going to have a, a, a much better array of choices. That charge call was on Treve Jones. In for the game now is uh, Peyton Flint, Nye Johnson, 
Again, Aiden Taylor likes that three, but so far today that's not been a great uh, percentage play for him. Nice put back. Got his own rebound there. Peyton Flint finished up. Here's the pressure again. So we got some pressure. I think probably getting right in the game is trying to get a little better quickness yeah, to match the... Good look. Didn't Good go. Re great rebound by Peyton. And what I said and about Peyton foul. on the old board, he and Treve on the old boards, they're just, they're and both that, gifted. That foul is on Parsons. And uh, Peyton will go to the line for two shots. Free throws. Here goes the free. Here goes those crazy free throws. One for two. Much smoother. One for two. And here's that pressure. On that one, there's a temptation for for Johnson to take on the double, but you're better to draw one of them, kick, cut, get it back. Eliminate some of the pressure against well, yourself. Well, he has, he has a teammate right there with him, right? That's so what I'm no saying. Need, the the no dish was there. The, yeah, the no kick and get back was there. Right? There's a nice kick there. Again, it's a good look for him. It didn't go in. He hasn't gotten a flow this game. He hasn't, has he? he? No. no. He, hasn't, he hasn't gotten into the flow. Those are definitely his shots. And his foul throw, was his foul throw fairly early? Yes. And yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, and that often will affect it. Yeah, that threw him right off. And you can see a little bit of frustration on his face with that also, missing those shots that he knows he normally makes. That's a great look. That's a good look. Very smoothly yeah. taken. Great, great look. A lot of confidence. Maybe that'll build him back up a little bit. That was Aiden Rondeau. Yeah. Oh, okay, we were given 23, yeah, but he's 20. Yeah. yeah, Rondo hit that last three. There you have that pressure again, that half-court pressure from Armbre. Fairly substantial margin to open up here, Les. Yeah, it, ha it definitely has. And I think that comes from the pressure. I mean, they had no three or four possessions where they just stole the ball and finished with layups. Yeah. So. Got a number of, of, of high turnovers with rapid, easy numbers in transition, and they finished. I mean, the aggression, right? Yeah. Um, has, de has definitely upped its, upped its presence. Again, the odds on game. that take are not great. No, not at all. Because a lot of quick hands getting up there. A lot of bodies were in there, too, right? Yeah. Peyton Flynn from the corner. Again, nice point. penetration set up the kick. Yeah, kick gave it caught in rhythm and nice assist from Dion, Dion uh, Coward there. Good. Uh, yeah. look, look who's there, Johnny. On Good the spot. effort on the old boards. Uh, yeah, there's the tip a rebound kept there. It alive. Sejong, Ross kept Sejong it alive right. for right and easy finish. Now on that possession there, Flint started to flail away from when he should have been coming to the hoop because that was a perfect spot for a rebound. Yeah. I would like maybe on the kick to see what would have happened if he'd reversed the ball too. Had a pass pass over there for better angles and numbers. Nice take yeah, under control nice take. by Nye. Nice take for Nye. And Good still look. Nicely done. <laughs> nice pass from Aiden for Madden Ross. Now that's an instance where defensively you don't have to foul there. I mean, yes, you're outnumbered and they executed well, but you can you can do some physical things to distract the shooter, mm -hmm. but without fouling. And particularly with Nadeau, is that his third? Uh, that would be his third, yeah. 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 So again, as a player, as he gets more experience and learns and whatever, you, you learn in that situation. Yeah, I can I can try to disrupt that's this right. attempt, but I don't have to foul. Yeah. The least amount of fouls I have, the longer I stay on the court. So. Yeah, but it was well executed by uh, Ross Man, and Ross, uh, yeah. Rondo, I think, for yeah. Uh, Bayview. Yeah, no, and for the, sure. And the early uh, outlet up court was was what made it all possible. 
and, and, Ma and Madden could have just taken the ball, turned around, taken the ball himself, but he saw his he's, other teammates he's there. What he's shown so far throughout the game is, is a really nice activity in the old boards and a lot of unselfishness. Mm -hmm. he's, he's done a lot of good things for his teammates. Yes, yeah, definitely so. So as you said, this, it looks like we got a little bit of a spread here now. So it's 59-37 for Armbre. Uh, they stretched it out a little bit. So we'll see if in the last 427, I guess, if, uh, if well, uh, Bayview, Bayview has a, they've has got a little got to bit take of care. Of, they've got to take care of the ball. They've got to regain control of the boards, which, which they had early, but have, have uh, no longer. And they've got to make free throws <laughs> yes. and slowly creep back in. I mean, anybody that, that saw Bayview play last year compared to the team this year, like they just had a lot of size last year. They also really played really well together. They did. Yeah. They did. Their, their, their seniors really um, stepped up and, and, and took control. Um, and their decision making as a team last year was very high order, very high level. So Elijah Matley's back in for in the games uh, I saw them play for least. Ollie. Ooh, interesting. Okay, kick. There you go. There's a nice kick there. Now Elijah had to. I call that a knockdown. If if you don't catch it, catch it you're shoot. probably not going to have great rhythm on the shot attempt. Oh, nice pass. Oh, nice block. Nice block from. Jalen there on Madden Ross. Nicely Ball's back done. up the court. Yeah. He's way off. Johnson got the rebound. And then there's a foul by Dion Coward. Yeah, good good uh, activity to the old boards by Dion, but then at that stage of the game, you again, you look, you accept that, hey, That's not right. going to get it back right now. Got to, you know, disrupt, d make d things d difficult. See if I can yeah, get it be patient. Way. Exactly. Now he's got Johnson here. He's guarding Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. Here we go, five and five. Aiden Taylor trying to get back into the mix. He's been on the bench for a little bit. Nice yeah, look. Big, big three by Sejong and Wright. And smooth by Sejong Wright. Yeah, he shot that very, Nice very, kick, very nice catch and deliver. Very confident. Nice look. Again, good nice rhythm. Wide, nice wide open look there for Sam. Didn't quite get the, his feet set the way he wanted to, I don't think, on that three. But the team rhythm was very good to set it up. You can definitely see how uh, Armbre has settled down compared to early mm -hmm. in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. They've gotten uh, a little more patient, making better decisions. Although I think you're correct that the defense has cued most of it. Oh, most definitely, yeah. yeah. Now again, on that Great one, uh, didn't get set to take a s make a strong putback. If he had, I think he would have been able to, to finish that. Oh, nice fake. Nice fake. Ooh. Take was good. I bet you he wants that one back. Yeah, no doubt. Because he had done the work. Yeah, he was <laughs> right there. But that's the athleticism that uh, these guys have. Um, you know, they're very quick, quick footed, quick first step. Quick feet, quick hands. Yeah, yeah very much so. And that's for quite a few of them on the team. It's not just one yep. or two players. That's a nice pass. That's a nice find and, nice, and nice move by Nye to create the, the uh, lane for, so they could get the dish because it looked like they were shut off for a minute there. Yeah, he came to the ball, so there was no need to put the ball on the hoop. He just laid it right up. Fouls there. Yeah, that was a great find. We got a foul here. On That's Dion on Dion. Coward. What? How many is that I on? I think that might only be one on Dion. I think he might only have Didn't one. Didn't he get the one down here? Okay, you would have two then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So two quick, but only two. Well, okay. I'm I'm assuming because you he's still on yeah. the floor. <laughs> yeah. D d good, pretty good assumption, I guess. <laughs> I think if he had three, Coach Tramble might uh, have him come have a chat. Although again, it being his first game and with a 20 point margin, sometimes coaches early in the season will make a decision to be a little more patient. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cole Johnson went one for two there. There's Elijah Mantley going to the hoop. 
like to see him try the glass on that one a little bit. He's in the crowd and very, very smooth take actually, but would like to see him think about the glass. Another good look by Sejan Wright. Missed that one just off, but definitely a good look for him. I think it, he, was, he rushed himself slightly more on that one. Than I think he saw a player coming yeah. towards him. Yeah, a little more crowded yeah. and just a slight rush of the body and on the Nye take. Beals is back on and Nye Johnson's going to take a seat. So Bayview trying to do a little bit of pressure. They to are trying to put a little bit on. Not a bad look, but... Long. Good cut, good delivery, nice kick. That's a good look. That's a really good look. And it looks smoother than the last one that he took, actually. Hmm. Okay, not bad. Bayview's decide to still stay in the man. That's a big three by Renai Beal. Caught in rhythm and knocked down. Renai has been, I think I said it earlier, but Renai has played very well. He's been the deciding today. factor for sure. Um, it looks like Johnson's down uh, with a little bit of a. There's a big rebound there by Sam pushing the ball. Hmm. Gonna look to move the ball around the horn. Try to see what they can find. On that one, I'd like to see Treve just step in and seal that kid because then you've got a, an easy diagonal post feed from from uh, Jalen. Yeah, he was there, but he wasn't posted up. He didn't so step in and seal. Yeah, he, yeah. he just kind of was in the neighborhood, but not visiting. You know. Nice finish there by uh, by Ross and the uh, assist by Rondeau. Good. Elijah Matley, that's a big three. That big was three going to that the was third. a really nice sequence because when it came to Elijah the first time, he quickly got it back to, to Sam. Sam got penetration, drew that extra defender to give that extra extra half second on the kick, and then Elijah caught it in much better rhythm. So the two of them together in that a number of really good nice basketball decisions. Yeah, and Elijah was ready to shoot that when that came back. He yeah. was already shot ready, so that makes a big difference. Yeah. Well, good shot selection tends to be within the flow of Timo. And a lot, too many kids don't understand that. But individual rhythm and balance, yes. But the individual rhythm and balance is much more available within the flow of good Timo. So we're going to go into the fourth um, with Ombre Osprey up 69-47 over the Bayview Sharks. So Bayview has a little bit of work to do. Um, looks like Johnson is getting his ankle checked out over on their bench. So we'll see if he returns. Given the margin and with a quarter left, yeah, uh, they this might this early in the season they might want to unless he's really ready to go. Exactly, <laughs> might, might be a wiser move to just say ice and let's heal. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, and uh, coach. Uh, Athletic Director Sue Beasley just took over the bag of ice, so he's got the ice if he wants to just sit back and cheer on his team or if he's going to choose to get back on the court. Co Coach Dan Higgins is going to put him back in. So we're starting the fourth quarter, 69-47 for Armbray. That's a good take, but I don't think he needed the reverse pivot. He had, he had gained what he needed. Nice kick, though. Carson's put up that three again. It's off the back iron. And here comes Renai Beals settling down, looking for people to keep moving. That's a nice rebound there. Oh, board. Nice rebound there. Treve. By Treve Jones. Oh, good take. But got himself a little too deep. And Armbray's off and running again. Travel. Yeah. yeah, he got it. He got on, it. on that one, nice kick by Jalen. Maybe instead of taking that, because there's nothing there really in rhythm, and the D is coming back. 
swing that thing or penetrate high to draw angle and then you've got nice reversal off the off the kick Trevay's eyes were up and he saw that rim and he yeah, was going. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the but the feet were not down. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> the eyes were indeed up. Nice yeah, crossover. Nice, nice crossover. Oh, oh, didn't nice crossover. Just got himself pinned on a little too deep under the rim and board, but a very nice take to get there. Yeah, Cezanne Wright had a nice crossover. He couldn't finish, but uh, he got the rebound. His teammate Aiden got the rebound and finished up. So. And that foul is on Fort Knox, number 10. Jaden Bergman and Simmons will go up the line for two foul shots. Neither team has done uh, very well from the foul line Seriously, today. Liz, I, I don't know. You, you know, you, you've coached girls and women. I've coached sort of all <laughs> the combo sort of thing. I find women shoot, take free throws more seriously and shoot a higher percentage than men do in this era. You tell me. Uh, I well, I know, I know that my girls do because I stress foul shooting. Um, I just, it's, it's, so I it's just see it. Even you look at NCAA D1, you know, yeah, like yeah. great male players nice take and they don't Kate. they don't make free throws nice take by Peyton Clint Sejan's trying to push the ball up nice nice pass oh nice block by Peyton Flint nice nice dish to set up the, yeah. the penetration yeah that was well done between those two and got rewarded with the foul now Aiden will go knock to the it line. down And Peyton, you know, actually will know almost all of these players anyway because he spent some time at uh, Bayview, so playing football. So okay. he will know he will know some of these players, I'm sure. Okay. Either from a football team or just from being around the school school campus. Again, though, we came away with with 0 for two. Yes, exactly. It'll be a nice stat to look at later on after the game from both sides on uh, what the free throw percentage is. Well, I, I just, I'm not sure that the modern kid puts enough emphasis on, on the only way to become a great free throw shooter, which is to learn your correct routine and rhythm and then practice, practice, practice. I don't know that there's enough time put in on proper free throw making practice. Yeah, that was another foul there by Peyton Flint. Because you, coaches can't do it in practice, yeah, team you practice, you don't do have it. enough gym time. No. It, the, the individual player has got to take that responsibility and, and with coaching and input in terms of developing the routine and rhythm, et cetera, but you've got to then do it. Nice. That's a nice take by Sejan Wright. Every part of move. that was well executed yeah. by Wright. Nice. nice Nadeau back in. We'll see if he can get settled down a little bit. Nice take. Not high enough on the glass. Now, actually, Taylor has done a pretty good job uh, getting them into O, you yeah, know, for yeah. a big kid. Carson's uh, finished that you know, way up there. He's done not a bad job of getting his team into offense. And he's keeping himself on the court. I mean, he had three fouls yeah. in the first half, so... He's done a great job of being able to play smart and not pick up any more fouls. Yeah. We got a couple more uh, subs here. So, uh, Dion Coward and Jalen Rubin Simmons. Off and that possession didn't establish team rhythm early enough, and when you don't establish team rhythm, you tend to get individual errors. Knock one three. down. So he three. liked that shot all day, Aiden but Taylor. that one is, was taken much more smoothly than the prior attempts. Yeah, it would have been nice to see him on the court a little longer in the first half to see if he made it much of an input 
because he ha he did early in the game. Like he. Yeah. Well, I think he's playing out of role now, but he's yes. playing well. He's yes, playing he is. well. Yeah. You know, in this, in because, this role. Because we would normally have uh, Johnson as his yeah, point guard, exactly. right? Exactly. So. Pretty and good take. And there you go, Parsons, and uh, little yeah. good good timeout yeah, because little, they little have uh, they have really altered rhythm considerably. Yeah, they were just up 73-53 and now 73-60. So, Coach well, JT uh, wants to have a chat. He doesn't want them to uh, lose focus and get complacent. Because 550 with this margin is plenty of time. Most definitely, most definitely. You know, it's one possession at a time. Right, one possession at a time, and they're down six possessions, potentially, so. It's funny, a lot of time fans will like, you know, why, da, 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 da. but coaches, as you know, uh, we're pessimists. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to be. <laughs> and we have yet to find, when we have a lead, we have yet to find a clock that runs at a suitable pace. <laughs> <laughs> Get us to the end, Lord, please. Well, and, and you can see that, you know, in the last couple possessions that the Ospreys have taken taken step, a step back from the tenacious defense that they had and so they're giving they're giving Bayview more shots more open shots and actually allowing them to penetrate they're not one more. we're not seeing the turnovers no. which may lead That's to right. instant uh, transition right. for for our arm Bray, but also uh, Bayview are getting the ball entered quickly and then doing good things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason why Renard deals back on to change up and, and try to run the offense. Trying um, to settle the thing down and get down better. And, yeah. and, and uh, get them in the flow, get them into their offense quicker and smarter. Good read out here. Yes, yes. And it con just continuing to do good things on his takes. Very much in balance, down, um, stable on his takes. That's another foul on Fort Knox. I find that Renai Beals, he really sees the open lanes when they're available. Yeah, and it, to me though, he, he both physically and mentally and psychologically has matured this year, what I've seen so far dramatically from what he was doing in those yes. same opportunities last year. Most definitely, yeah, most definitely. I have a thing called stay down, play down. And when you go into the paint, for some reason, humans think up. <laughs> but the successful humans think down. And he's down and in control mm -hmm. and in balance. Nice take. Nice block. Good recovery by Nadeau. But that was a very nice crossover explosion to, to get uh, penetration there. Yeah, say John uh, Wright has impressed me. I haven't seen him play yeah. in a long time since probably, probably when mid he was mini much at younger, the Y. Right? Yeah. Um, so it really impressed me on... Uh, on him, especially like say for grade 10, 9 or 10, whichever grade he's in out there. I think he's grade 10. That was a good crossover reverse layup attempt, didn't go, and then Treve Jones followed up with the, the uh, old board but couldn't get the put back to draw. This is a little shaky. They've got to get, are, they've gotta get out of here and reverse. Right above yeah. now. Okay. Be better off to reverse that, guys. Yep. That's a big Led to three. a good three, and big now three. Taylor is showing why he was uh, liking the three early, even though they weren't going. And we don't see, you know, we haven't seen Bayview, but uh, clearly that is within his repertoire. Yeah. He's much smoother in, in this half. And I talked to Coach Higgins before the game. And I good take. Yeah, another basket there by Parsons. So now it's down to 10. It was up to 20. It was up to 22. Yeah, I but it was down to... What was so it? 13, yeah, okay. Down to Ted right now. Nice That's three. That's a big three there. That is his game, and it's one it of the is. few times today that where he's actually just played comfortably within himself kind of thing. He seems to have been, as, as you pointed out early in the, in the game, just not quite comfortably rhythmic in the way that he normally is. Yeah, he never, he never got a chance to get a flow because he got into foul trouble so early in the yeah. game. And he's the kind of player that, you know, if he knocks down those first two or three uh, shots, whether they're threes or deep twos, and he starts getting pumped and hyped, and you see his swagger, and, and he just never got that flow today. So Yeah, he um, can really shoot it. He can. He can. And the deep corners, like, th that's those are his money balls, deep corners. Yeah. 
You know, we've seen him hit a couple from the top of the key. I, I'm interested. You may have seen him more than I have, but he frequently would take his corner three as a lefty from the left side. I'd like to see him take some from the right side because, frankly, percentages may go up yeah, as, as yeah. a lefty from the right. It's just something about the backboard being on your shooting hand side that tends to diminish Most the of percentages. his have been from the other side. Most yeah. of them have definitely been from that side. I don't know if that's the way they're running their offense and that's where he's at or... Yeah. That's just kind of and I'm just saying himself, that right? totally speculatively, right? Yeah. Might be wrong, but I'd just be interested to see that. Uh, it's definitely a sweet spot, for sure. I think he, when he's in rhythm and balance, there's a lot of sweet spots. <laughs> yes, that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. Idea was good. Yeah. Tipped the pass off a bit too much. Old boards again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, that's something that Jalen's very strong at when he's in there. For his size, he's a very yes. strong. He's uh, a very strong player. Oh, uh, nice rebounder. take. Nice, nice take. take. Nice, strong. A another take really by solid take by Sejon yeah. John Wright. Yeah, he's doing. He's doing a great job. Nice kick. Boom. There you go. You Lovely lock. find that time, and again. Rhythm, team rhythm leads to individual You can't leave rhythm. Elijah Mantley wide open like that. Mm. Oh. Little bit oh. risky Little, on, yeah. the, on the dish there, although Parsons did a good job of turning it into a positive. So he'll go to the line, and uh, these are crucial, crucial uh, foul shots for sure. There's one. That's one of the few first free throws that they've made. That baby has made, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Generally, of the two, if they've made it, it's been the second been shot. Second, right, and, and again, there it is, one yeah. for two, right? So got to, got to, uh, yeah. That's been a factor in this game. That, that field goal attempt is within Dion's uh, game, but again, not having had a lot of practice or game action at this stage of the game, I don't think he's quite there yet. No, and I think, and I think Bayview should be um, actually pretty glad that he's not there yet because yeah. Yeah. he definitely would have made a different impact on this game himself yeah. too. So, you know. Nice board. Nice, nice pass. Dish. Nice finish. Nice ball movement, nice team basketball. Uh, good breakout Dion, dribble, good got, you know, got, got down very quickly and made the right decision. Nice kick up nice by Parsons. Nice delivery. Not a bad look. That was a good mid-range jumper. That was a yep. good mid-range jumper there. Uh-oh. Yep. We're at a minute and 35 seconds in the game. Oh, that's a great rebound. Again, he, he and Peyton Flynn are just that's very, a, a they're innately good <laughs> to the old glass. Nice pick. Yep. Yeah. Good hustle. You know, I mean, you know, you're up by 19 a minute, minute and then a little bit all left and you're still going to the floor um, and wanting that loose ball. Like that's what the coach wants to see. Right? That's what the coach yeah, wants I mean, to see. Yeah, I mean, Wright's have shown that he's very capable ball handler. I think he got a little relaxed with the ball on that one and Dion kind of surprised him with the quick hands but um, and Bayview will get it back but yeah hey basketball yeah one series of exchanges left. it's 88-69 uh, for Aaron Bray so we'll see uh, the last minute and 17 seconds and see them play it out the one thing I think I have noticed for as much as everybody's gone to the foul line, I haven't seen anybody in bonus yet. Were they in bonus yet? That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. But there seem to be an awful lot of fouls and a lot of, t a lot of trips to the foul line. Well, the what I think, I think last quarter. Uh, Bayview was in bonus, i.e. Armbray had five fouls. Uh, I remember noticing on the scoreboard, but then I don't think it became an issue. So tonight's game is live streamed by Maritime Profiles. Check out Maritime Profiles 
on the YouTube channel for all your local maritime sports athletes and highlights. And again, Coach Greenlaw and I want to thank you all for joining in tonight and watching our local high school basketball. Giving the support to our local athletes well is huge. Okay. Didn't work out, but the team ball movement was good. That's a nice kick. Good push. And good a finish. Transition. And a finish. That finish was by Matt Fort Knox. Grayson Burke is now on the court, along with uh, Will Stewart. And Ethan. Ethan's on. Elijah and Jalen. That's in rhythm. Okay, didn't go, but it was a good look. We have 17 seconds left. And it looks like Osprey will go one and one in league play as they defeat Bayview Sharks 88-71. So one and one in league play and two and one overall. And Bayview will work to get their some of their key kids healthy and <laughs> yeah, you know. for sure, for sure. Um, the kids that played tonight did a really great job, stepped up in the roles that they probably weren't used to. Um, and so it was a great game, great game to watch. So we are going to sign off tonight. Um, thanks coach for joining me on the mic. It's been a pleasure. I know you enjoyed watching the game. Yeah, um, always a pleasure. Yeah, and, 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 and it was a very good game to watch, so we really appreciate that, too. It, yeah, it's early season, and, you know, much is to be... And some of it looked like early season, Yep, it's for sure, yep. but that's okay. Although there were moments when, you know, some very good basketball yeah, was definitely, played. Yeah, so. definitely, definitely. And like you say, like, um, you know, Ombre has a lot more younger players than, than uh, Bayview, um, but you definitely can see that there's a lot of good talented players on both teams but definitely talented young players up and coming yeah it's actually i've been impressed with you know trying to get out and watch some high school basketball there's just a lot of uh, nice young talent um again it's uh, a fair, fair amount of young talent actually yeah there is there's a lot of great young talent um, so, so it's going to be great to watch them as they move forward all right so we're going to sign off for tonight and uh, keep watching and looking for Maritime Profiles on your YouTube because they will be covering high school girls and guys basketball um, around the province over the season. So check and them out. It is great entertainment. It is great entertainment. <laughs>
At Armbray, the annual fund campaign is really the backbone of our fundraising efforts. That's because the projects are designed to enhance the learning of current students. So we conceive of and raise funds for the project this year, for example, and then we launch it next year. In the past, you've supported projects like smart board upgrades in classrooms, classroom furniture upgrades, playground equipment, uh, the new class set of microscopes in the science lab, and of course the new bike shelter that's being built this week. So thank you for your support of those projects. Like all independent schools, tuition fees only cover about 85% of our operating costs. So it's through the generosity of donors like yourselves that we're able to bridge that gap. This year's projects include um, musical instruments, visual art equipment, and smart board upgrades across all divisions, and of course our scholarship and bursary fund as well. In the coming weeks and months, you'll be given opportunities to support the project or projects of your choice, and I just wanted to take a moment here to thank you in advance for doing so. Thank you for your support. 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 Thank you for your support.